Good morning. Oh, we have such a lovely crowd this morning, all the lovely voices lifting up and resonating in this beautiful hall that we sit in. So thank you for being with us, worshiping with us this morning uh, as we begin to come together and focus on our prayers. Let us hear these words to ponder. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. So welcome. I'd like to first remind anyone, do we have any first time visitors with us this morning, worshiping? Any? All right, well thank you all for continuing to worship with us. Uh, let's see, I have a little task list here I'm following. Oh, you could fill out your prayer cards now. That would be wonderful. If everybody would like to start doing that. And I believe there's a registration on the edge of the pew, so you'll pass that along. And this is a great time to meet anyone in your pew that you have never met before. So that's wonderful. And we have a few announcements this morning. I'll start. I'd love to remind everyone that my favorite time of year is upon us. It is the time of that Jesus was born, amen. amen, and Miss Lisa and I love, love, love coming together and working with our young children on the Christmas pageant. Um, and Becky, do you, could, do you have the schedule in front of you? Because I actually don't have it. So we thought we would share the rehearsal schedule. Do you want to just let everyone know, is there a, I'll let Becky do the, the formal discussion of this. So practices, can you hear me, is this on? Practices will start during Sunday school, November 26th, and also during Children's Church, so twice each Sunday. Miss um, Atanasio is very strict. <laughs> no, I love, I, I love to remind my children, oh, and, and we perform on the 17th. I love to remind my children and any family with us that uh, I do this as a passion of mine. It, I was very shy as a young child. I know that's hard to believe. Um, but I came to find theater when I was in high school and I had the great good fortune, like many of us do, of having an English teacher that came to me and saw in me that potential and said, you really should start doing this. I think it will help you. And it changed. It was a transformative experience. So I, I I am only strict in that I'm disciplined about the times we meet. But no, I love having the children come, and I, we are warm and welcoming, and we will make it fun for everyone. Right, Theo? We're going to make it fun for everyone? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lydia. All right. And if you're, if you're young at heart, you can also find a part with us. Who knows? <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, there is another announcement, Pastor Martha. Good uh, morning. Since we're talking about Christmas, uh, it is time to think about our Advent study, which will um, start the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, but we need to order the books. So if you're interested, sign up downstairs. I'm going to be ordering books tomorrow. Uh, we can always order more. Uh, but if you're interested to look at what we're doing, it's all the good, a Wesleyan way of Christmas. And um, next, I don't know if here we're going to share this, but next Sunday is our Thanksgiving feast here at 5 o'clock when we have our potluck dinner, and then ecumenical service at 7 over at the Congregational Church. First time we've come together since the pandemic, so looking forward to the joint choir. Yeah, that's a, that's a busy day next Sunday. Um, so we will need some help. Uh, ahead of time, so if you could come, some people could come at 4.30, help us get set up for the Thanksgiving dinner, and then some folks um, stay back to clean up. Uh, the choir has to hightail it out to get to the Congregational Church to warm up for the ecumenical service, so we'll need some folks to help clean up afterwards as well. Uh, so it's, there's plenty of opportunities for service, uh, but it's always a great time, and the the ecumenical choirs are sounding really good, so if you're uh, of mind to attend that service at 7 next Sunday, 
seven in the evening. Um, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. We have one more announcement. Holly Fair. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, just uh, one last reminder: the Holly Fair is Saturday, this coming Saturday, from nine to two. Um, Thursday, no, Friday morning, uh, could, if you would like to come and volunteer for chicken picking, that begins at 9.30. Uh, we're going to be working in the kitchen throughout that day, so if you can't make it in the morning, you can come in the afternoon. We have some other kitchen help that needs to be done. There will be setting up. Um, okay, so baked goods, if you're going to bring them, please bring them in on Friday. And we're still accepting donations of books and Christmas items through Thursday. And if you want to participate in the Holly Fair, see me after church if you don't already have a, a position and want to help out. We'll see if we can find something for you. And we'd like to do that. And we hope you all will come and make this a church event and bring your friends. Thanks. Holly Fair is one of my favorites. Thank you. Uh, any other announcements to lift up? How about birthdays or anniversaries? Oh, and the hands go up. Where shall we begin? How about you down there, Sharon? Go ahead. We should have done the anniversary tomorrow. <gasps> Happy anniversary. How many years? Uh, 14. 14. Okay, how about, yeah. Oh, Mr. Becker. Mm. The, uh, Coverly. All right, very good. Lydia? Oh, Theo? Yesterday. Yesterday? <gasps> Any others? Yeah. All right, that's a great birthday gift for all the birthdays. Let's get some wreaths. Yes. All right, excellent. Any any others? Yes. My sister Sally's birthday is next Saturday. All right. Well, let's sing a. Oh, right in front. Okay, so many birthdays to celebrate. Let's sing a wonderful, rejoicing, happy birthday. Happy anniversary. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And now I think we get to pass the peace. And I'm going to start because this was sitting next to me, and I just thought it warmed my heart. We're going to find smiles inside here today. So let's all stand and pass the peace. Yes? Oh, we're waving. Oh, oh we wave. We wave. <laughs> yes. Virtual hug. Virtual hug. All right. Let us... Uh, Rejoin our worship together and focus on our, uh, our worship this morning. Jesus, tell all our troubles, hear our faith is strong. 
Let's all stand and sing together and uh, uh, participate in the call to worship, which I believe is found in your bulletins. I believe we sing first. O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in the miracle. I will utter dark sayings from the Lord. Things that we have heard and known that our forebears have told us. We will not hide them from their children, but tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord, the might and wonders God has wrought. The Ephraimites, armed with the bow, with the bow, turned back on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant, but refused to walk according to God's law. They forgot the deeds of the Lord, the miracles that God has shown them. The Lord brought marvels in the sight of their forebears, in the land of Egypt, in the fields of Zion. The Lord divided the sea and let them pass through it and made the waters stand like a heap. Let them with a cloud in the daytime and all the night with a fiery light. Cleft rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. Made streams out of the rock and caused waters to flow down like rivers. Yet they sinned still more against God, rebelling against the Most High in the desert. They tested God in their heart by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God, saying, And God spread the table in the wilderness. Indeed, God struck the rock so that water gushed out and streams overflowed. Can God also give bread to provide meat for the people? They did not believe in his wonders, so God made their days like a breath, turned their years into terror. Whenever God slew them, they would inquire after God, repent, and seek God earnestly. They remembered that God was their rock, the most high God, their redeemer, whom they flattered with their mouths, to whom they lied with their tongues. Their heart was not steadfast toward God, they were not true to God's covenant. Yet God, being compassionate, forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. We shall listen, Lord, to your teaching and hear the words of your mouth. Those who can, let us remain standing and sing, Creator of the Earth and Skies, number 450 in your hymnals.
You may be seated. Let us pray in unison together the prayer of confession found in our bulletins. You have called us to give ear to your teachings. However, we continue to turn our backs and ignore the wonders you reveal to us. We wander in our own wilderness at times, seeking what we want out of life, rather than remaining steadfast in your ways. We serve our individual desires instead of serving your will. Lord and Master, have mercy. Let us take a moment to pray silently those heavy burdens which we feel in our hearts. Hear these words of assurance. God is our rock and our redeemer. His heart is steadfast toward us, even when we do not return the favor. His covenant endures forever. Despite our iniquities, it is his grace and compassion that saves us. Repent and be saved. Our first scripture reading comes from Joshua 24, verses 1 through 3a, and then following up with 14 through 25. If you'd like to follow along with me, you can do so in the Old Testament of your Bible, page 205. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the offices of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father, Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac. Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. I have a beautiful anthem now. We will.
trees and mountains, valley and flowing river, field and plain. Praise to Thee, O Lord, for all creation. Hear God's thankful hearts that we may see. All that gives Thee share and every blessing. All But that 
that's not really how we think about it at church. Stand right next to me, right? You got a lot in there, right? Yeah. You're pretty good. But listen, it's not give to your church till it hurts that that's what we want. Actually, we want to do something even harder. We want you to give till it feels good. Right? Which sometimes is harder than giving till it hurts. <laughs> but if you give till it feels good, we'll always end up with the biggest gifts. <laughs> right? So remember your flesh card next week if you can, or if you forget, we'll take it late too. Thank you. And speaking of gifts, let the young people come forth with theirs for the Heifer Project as the rest of us sing, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. And I bet that didn't hurt at all, did it? This might, though. Oh, there we go. <laughs> How is everybody today? I believe tired because I didn't hear anybody else say anything. How are we all doing today? Um, you sure? Yeah. Okay. Tired. Tired? What do you tired? What do you have to be tired from? What are you tired? School. School will do that to you, right? You ready? Opposite of tired. Good. All right, tell everybody. Go home. That's, yeah, in about half an hour. Is that okay? Well, you said school makes you tired, right? Well, I'm going to make you a little tired from doing some school stuff in a minute, okay? Yay. Who likes to read? All right, I need a volunteer to read my tie. Some of it's cursive. Yeah? All right. You know what? I got Natalie right here in the middle. Go ahead. For God so loved for a world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever be believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Wow. All right. <laughs> LNA? Hmm? John. Yes, that's, that's the verse in the Bible where this comes from, John 3.16. I'm pretty sure I only know L, A, and M in cursive. Okay, well, you'll get there. You got time. You'll learn how to sign your name, and then you'll wish you didn't know how to. Uh, yeah, so this message is probably one of the most well-known messages of the Bible, besides the 23rd Psalm. And it tells us something very, very important. It tells us who God loves, okay? And who is it that God loves according to this? Well, it says something about his son, but uh, it also says that he, God so loved the world. There you go, the world. And not all the world knows that or loves him back, right? And some of them don't love him back because they don't know that he loves them. And others know about what we believe and still don't love him. So, yeah, you know, it's our job to make sure that the people who don't know do know. Okay? So do your best as you go forth, uh, go forward through life to help other people to know it and to feel it. I mean, it has to be them that feels it, but you can help. Okay? So do everything you can to help others feel it by your actions by showing them what a Christian really is, okay? That, <laughs> you think you could do that, Graham? What do you mean? Do you think you can help others feel the way that, uh, the, the love of God through you? Yes. Yeah, I think you can. I think all of us can. It's not always as easy as we want it to be, okay? And sometimes you'll have choices to make in life. And you have to choose which way to go. 
and we're going to have uh, another reading. Well, we actually talked about um, serving one master over another, and you, you know, those are all just choices we have to make. So it's up to you to, to choose to serve God or to serve you know, someone or something else. And uh, hopefully, as you go forth, what you learn in, in here and what you live in your life will uh, help others to find God and know that he loves them too, okay? Because he does love the world. You ready? We're going to pray now. Dear God, thank you for loving us and the rest of the world, even if they're not ready to love you back. If we can help even one person love you the way you love them, the world will be a better place. In Christ's name we pray. In name we pray. Amen. Now we're going to hand, sing hymn number 720, Wake, Awake, for Night is Flying.
Our second reading this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 25, first 13 verses. They can be found at page 26 of the New Testament of your Pew Bible. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten young women took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those young women got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom, bridegroom came and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the other young women came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Anyone who's worked on a church cleanup or fix-up project or mission trip of any kind is well aware of the fact that there are many among us who would qualify as a jack of all trades, those who are just as capable in the field of carpentry as in plumbing, masonry, or landscaping. Their God-given ability, combined with years of training and experience, has blessed this congregation and community at large too many times to count. The rest of us do our best to lend a helping hand, but without the guidance of those who know best, many of the undertakings upon which we embark would pale in comparison to what's accomplished under the watchful eye and skilled hand of the master craftsmen and women who choose to serve alongside the novices, teaching them tricks of the trade so that all may play a productive role in the project. It's been said that even the master was at one time a beginner. And it's in this spirit that so many of our projects have gone so well. Whoever chooses to serve is valued, as is their contribution. Many hands make light work, regardless of the disparity of the skill among those hands. The phrase jack of all trades is typically associated with a follow-up refrain, master of none. In many instances, this tends to be true. It is not easy to be good at so many different things, even with the best training available. This is where the God-given ability comes into play. Even if it weren't their intent to serve the Lord through the acquisition and subsequent mastery of these skills, it was indeed his intention, his will, that they eventually be utilized to serve his divine purpose. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. When we unite in service to do God's work by serving others, even those of us who are not jacks of any trade, become masters of whatever it is that we can do. A loving heart and kind spirit provide all the skill that is needed to serve our Heavenly Father. Even when we do so alone in less conspicuous ways, God is with us, making us 
as capable as the situation requires. He doesn't call the prepared. He prepares the called. And what better master is there than God himself? The smallest act of kindness is still an act. As the book of James reminds us, true faith requires works. Faith without works is dead. In this morning's gospel, we heard of the five foolish virgins who, because of their failure to act, were left on the outside looking in. When the bridegroom came calling, their faith lacked work, and they paid the ultimate price as a result. Though all ten fell asleep in a literal sense, the foolish five were caught sleeping in the figurative sense as well because they were not ready at the appointed time. By failing to prepare, they had prepared themselves to fail. The Israelites in the wilderness had failed in their own way to prepare themselves to enter the land promised to their forefathers. After Moses' death, the responsibility of leading them across the Jordan fell to Joshua. He was well aware of how far the people had strayed from God's teachings, even after he did great signs in their sight. Some were even bold enough to worship the gods of Egypt despite what they had witnessed firsthand. Joshua called on them to restore their faith by acting according to the will of God rather than their own. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity. Old habits, as the saying goes, die hard. But the people agreed. They chose to cast aside their false gods, removing the yoke of their previous masters to serve and obey the Lord their God, the true master of all that is, all that was, and all that ever will be. We, as his people, need to do the same. Distractions come at us from all angles, all day long. It's our job to tune out the noise and focus on the word as it is intended, not the way that is most convenient to our own version of how things should be. Amen. There are many masters vying for our attention and support. Prepare yourselves and choose wisely, for we know not the hour. The last thing we want is to be left on the outside looking in. Amen. Amen. All right. At this time, we'll take the morning offering.
Now we'll take a moment to share the joys and concerns of the congregation and community. Dear Lord, please bless and protect those in need, those who are ready to enter your kingdom. They have lived good lives and may they rest peacefully. Please comfort those who are with them, alongside them, and who love them as we all do as well. Thank you for what you have done for us, for what you have given us, and for the strength to continue through faith. In Christ's name, amen. Let us now join together in the uh, prayer taught to us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning, number 454, Open My Eyes That I May See.
prepare to serve and prepare to be saved. Answer the bridegroom's call and be welcomed by his grace. Amen. Thank you. 